Starea de spirit este strâns legată de starea de sănătate, iar stresul și traumele ne pot cauza boli grave, precum scleroza multiplă sau artrita reumatoidă. O demonstrează tot mai multe studii, dar o spune și Gabor Mate, un renumit medic, psihoterapeut și scriitor canadian. El a fost în acest weekend la București și a oferit un interviu în exclusivitate postului nostru de televiziune. Um, I would like you to tell us what's the connection between uh, mental health and physical health. Multiple sclerosis, which is an inflammation of the nervous system, it can make you blind and weak and tired or numb or paralyzed. Uh, and it usually progresses and people get worse and worse. So the first person who talked about it was a French neurologist called Charcot. And he said, this is caused by stress. So there's multiple sclerosis, okay? Then there's rheumatoid arthritis. And there's a great Canadian physician called Sir William Osler, who lived in the 19th century, like Charcot, who was knighted by Queen Victoria and who taught in the United States at Johns Hopkins. And he said rheumatoid arthritis was caused by stress. And then there was a British surgeon uh, called James Paget, who in 1870 wrote a paper saying that women's depression and so on is a big role to play in cancer of the breast. Okay, now since those three people, 150 years ago, there's been multiple studies showing the relationship between emotional states and stress and trauma and all those three different conditions. So including cancers? Including cancer. There was a study three years ago from Harvard University that showed that women with severe symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder have doubled the risk of ovarian cancer. Men sexually abused in childhood have tripled the rate of heart attacks. Women, lots of, there's been lots of studies on multiple sclerosis, on rheumatoid arthritis, on cancer. So it's not a theory that I have. There's a science, you know, that's not even, it's absolutely proven. And not only the connections, but even physiologically how those connections work, because stress and trauma cause inflammation in the body. And stress and trauma change how the genes work. And stress and trauma age the chromosomes. The chromosomes get older and sicker, faster. There's multiple ways in which emotional stress and trauma lead to physical illness. It's not a theory. Okay, I mean, it's a theory, but it's a theory that reflects reality. You know what the theory is? The theory is that they're not connected. That's a theory. I want anybody to prove to me that emotions don't have, an don't have an impact physiologically. I want somebody to prove to me that the mind and body are separable. Due to pandemics, yeah. do you think that we will uh, see an increase of diseases in the next years because pandemics were really stressful? They mm -hmm. had an impact on, uh, on our minds? I'm afraid that we are. I mean, in the short term, we're already seeing it. We're seeing more mental illness, we're seeing more child abuse. We're seeing more people addicted. We're seeing more mental illness. That's because what happens is we're already living in a very stressful society, a very traumatized society. Then you add an extra stress. It's going to make people worse. Not everybody. Depends on what resources they have and how together they were in the first place. But for a lot of people, it's going to be a source of major stress, not to mention the ongoing insecurity about it, the economic you know, consequences, um, the setbacks in education, it's going to be hard. I think we're going to see, we already are seeing, and we're going to see even more mental health problems as a result. Uh, we also saw an increase of uh, drug ad addiction okay. and alcohol addiction. Okay. This is also connected to the human sufferings. Well, you see, here's the thing. Medical science, quote unquote, says that addiction is like a genetic disease. If it is, why is it increasing? Genes don't change in a population over 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. You know how many people died of overdoses in the United States last year? No. Make a guess. A million? Sorry? A million? No, only 100,000. Only 100,000. Okay, but that's more than America lost in Vietnam and Afghanistan and Iraq put together, 
almost twice as much in one year. Now, the, be the year before it was 72,000. And the numbers keep going up and up and up and up. And why is that? See? Why is that? Well, that's the whole point. If we realize that addictions are not a disease genetically, but they're a response to stress and trauma, <clears throat> then the more stress that you see in a society, the more addiction you expect to see. And that's what we're seeing. Society, you know, much more stressed now because people are economically very uncertain. The, certainly in the States, the American working class have lost their jobs. They've gone overseas. The jobs have, I mean. Yeah. People don't have a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning. They feel more under threat. If you talk to anybody that uses drugs or any kind of addictive behavior or alcohol, it's to escape some kind of stress or pain. The more pain there is, the more stress there is, the more addiction you're going to see. So what should we do to, in order to conserve our mental health? Well, it depends what you mean by the we. Who's the we? We people who, who are in suffering, so. Well, if you're talking individual people. Individual, yes. Yeah. People who are watching, for example. Yeah. Um, first of all, they should realize that if they do have a problem like depression or anxiety or an addiction, it's not because they're bad people. It's not because they're somehow flawed or mm, guilty. It's because they've suffered. And that the anxiety and the depression and the addiction are all as a result of some kind of trauma that happened to them. And that if they work with that trauma, if they get some help, if they talk about their emotions, they can probably work it through. But they should realize that it's not their fault, but there's something they can do about it. Those are the two big things. Tell me, what do you think society nowadays has an impact on kids, <coughs> on, okay. children? on children? Yeah. Well, just look at the numbers. More and more children are being diagnosed with anxiety, with depression, um, more make, in North America at least more kids are committing suicide. Millions of kids throughout the world are getting medications now that never used to. That's what's happening with children. Why is that happening? Not because the kids are sick, but because the parents are stressed. And when the parents are very stressed, the children don't get the kind of sense of security and safety and being accepted and being understood not because the parents don't love them, but because the parents are too stressed to be emotionally present for their children. And that means the kids are going to be anxious and depressed. They have trouble paying attention. They may not behave very well. So instead of trying to fix the kids, we need to fix the environment. 